sights on Mark's platform, and uh, I have a golden opportunity to show how to add a hundred, or excuse me, add a capacitor uh, to a 150 watt high pressure sodium. Now these are the more standard six by nine high pressure sodiums that you would see at like a hardware store or on Amazon.com. Not the nine by nine Econo lights that everyone seems to use. Uh, they have a capacitor in them. So for the sake of speed, here's what they're gonna look like. You need to remove the bulb, obviously, the socket, and the reflector, and that gets you to this point. So you're gonna need a capacitor. This is a 55 UF capacitor from Capacitor King. Um, you need one per light. You're also going to need two larger uh, 14 gauge or 16 gauge wire nuts and then whatever wire we're going to do a wiring upgrade while we're at it these things come with wimpy wires we're going to use this shielded three strand wire this is similar stuff that you would use for like a heavy duty extension cord this happens to be 14 gauge and we're going to do that because we're going to replace these wimpy shitty wires that come on these lights standard so the first thing you need to do is inside you have the socket the uh, ballast and the igniter and in order for this to fit where we want it right in there we need to turn the igniter over and the, I've got two different brands of these lights and they're both identical in size so I think this is fairly standard um, if you can't fit it in there you may have to get a little bit creative so we're gonna Oh, take it out. Have a magnetic screwdriver available. It makes grabbing those screws nice and easy. We're going to remove it, spin it upside down, and turn it 180. And that will allow us to hopefully you guys can see this. It's a cloudy day. Come on now. That will give us the extra half an inch or so we need to um, fit the capacitor behind the reflector. So now that we have that turned over, and remember my platform is upside down right now so we need to install the capacitor upside down. This will give us enough room to drop this capacitor. Just like that. And then the wires and stuff will pretty much hold in place. It won't vibrate around as much as you think. It's not like it's got room to be swinging around in there. Okay, so these things are super easy to wire up. Wherever the two, uh, uh, the white and the black wires, the power in are coming in, you simply just add them to the connection. It's, it's that easy. So we want to remove these wires, which can be stubborn entirely okay so now that we've got those removed I'm going to pull them through the hole and then we're going to take our new wires which I've stripped off about six or seven inches of sheathing and uh, sheathing on the ends and we need to run it through this thing kinking up the wires it's copper it'll straighten back out so you gotta force them through there a little because it's designed for a smaller wire and then take the bolt that holds whatever the hell you call this contraption Make sure that you have your wires orientated so that you're not going to pinch them. Just like that. And then you need to feed these wires back through this hole. I doubt you're going to be able to see this, but if you take it on this project, you understand what I'm talking about anyways. Oh, I forgot to remove the existing ground. Oh, man, that thing was tight. 
do not over tighten anything in here. Make it good and snug, but no more. It's cast aluminum, and if you over tighten it, you're going to ruin it. So, my bad, I forgot to remove that one. So, now that you've got those in there, I don't have the smallest hands. Some of these things are fairly difficult. These things are assembled by tiny Asians. Oh, this is a real shit show. What the fuck is this bolt in? God damn. Okay, and then you need to get that started back in that spot. You don't have to tighten it yet. So now that we have it started, I'm definitely going to have to edit this nonsense. Okay. Now I'm getting a fucking text. So, tune these wires back up because it's inevitable that you're going to get them all frayed. So literally, getting those wires in there is the hardest part. Okay. Now, got to isolate your wires. So, here was the wire that came from the factory, the black power leg in. Remove this tiny little nut, separate that wire, toss it to the side, you don't need that one no more. Get your larger nut, now that you have that, the one remaining wire from the um, uh, igniter, you need any of the two legs from the capacitor. They're both the same color. They're blue. It doesn't matter. You twist those two together. And then you need the black power leg coming in off your power. And actually, you could reverse these two, and it wouldn't matter either. But for the sake of keeping things uniform, black to black. And then you simply screw on that wire nut until it's tight. Boom. Good to go. You do the same thing for the white one. Here it is right here. Got some mess of wires in here, so here's your white power leg that you're gonna remove and upgrade to our new wiring. That nut was barely hanging on. Toss that one to the side. Grab the other blue wire from the capacitor. There she is. Wrap that around there. And then also your new white power wire. Give that a twist and get it started. And I realize these wire nuts don't seem like much, but I ran these exact lights. Where's my other, where's my other nut? I ran these exact lights for two years without anything coming loose inside here, so. Okay. Boom. And then this little green guy here. You need one of these. Which I'm going to assume you have since you're taking on this project. Slip that dude on. And give her a crimp. Boom. Okay. Now, this might be actually the hardest part of the whole thing, is trying to get this one little screw started back here. It's deep down in there. This is where our magnetic screwdriver plays dividends. Take the screwdriver and our pliers. It's like we're playing operation. Damn, man, the light is so low I can't even see. And there's a little raised bung in this housing. Boom, got it first try. So you tighten that dude up. 
Now you've added the capacitor. Now, I have uh, wired a plug on the end of this cord. I do not recommend that anybody tries this at home. You grab your bulb. Again, don't fuck around with electricity. Don't try this at home. Screw your bulb in. Keep your hands back and put some power to it and see if it works. And it works. So now that we've added the capacitor to it, uh, this will lower our overall amp draw and we'll be able to use the Yamaha or Honda 2000 watt inverter generators um, and we want to run those at 60% nice and quiet. So adding the capacitors lowers your overall amp draw and uh, we upgraded the wiring. This is uh, it's minute changes here with the, with the wiring but the bigger wiring is, is obviously better and then while we have the reflector out we paint it flat white flat white is more reflective than shiny metal if shiny metal was the most reflective thing potheads would use shiny metal on the walls to grow marijuana but they don't they paint the walls flat white or they use mylar so paint your reflectors flat white if you have any questions let me know thanks